So I've been feeling a little creatively blocked lately, and in an attempt to get some creative juices flowing, I wanted to take part in some random explorations. And one exploration that I've always wanted to do was the Selection API exposed by the browser. The Selection API allows us to read and change the currently selected text in the page. And one thing that I thought would be fun to do with this API is to outline the text that's currently selected. So for example, if I just click and drag, you can see that I'm outlining the text with two different types of boxes, a thick red box and a dashed blue box. These two types of boxes are different parts of the API that report different DOM rect or DOM rectangle interfaces, and I'm just overlaying those on top of the, the page. In fact, if you look at the DOM here, uh, what we can see at the bottom when I select is that I'm just injecting a bunch of divs that represent these, these overlays. Now, if we look at the console here, what we can see is I'm outputting a selection object, a range, ob a range object, various DOM rect and DOM rect lists, and then you can see it as well, the, uh, the text of the overall selection. So let's take a quick look and see how we're doing this in the code. So first, my two DOM recs here, the red one and the dash blue one, one is the bounding, meaning it surrounds the entire text selection, and then one is the segment rect, which um, outlines each element contained within the selection. And if we jump down here to the code, what we can see is that I'm binding to the selection change event emitted by the browser. This gets fired as the user changes the text selection. And if someone, say, clicks and drags, Right, if I click and I drag, it's actually firing a whole bunch of times as I'm doing this. So in order to not be constantly updating the DOM, I'll be debouncing the, uh, the actual drawing of the rectangles. Uh, in IE 11, I had to add the select here to get the first one to work. Otherwise, it only fires the selection change on subsequent changes. And um, another thing to note is that the, these elements are being reported or the, the dimensions and locations of these elements are being reported relative to the viewport. So when I render these DOM, I'm actually rendering them with a uh, position fixed, right? So they're relative to the viewport, not to the document, which means that as I scroll, you can see they get out of place and then I have to reposition them. Um, you could of course do some more mathematical finagling to get those to be relative to the document, not the viewport. Uh, but to keep things simple, I'm just redrawing them when the viewport changes. So let's take a quick look to see what our handle selection change does. And you can see here that I'm simply debouncing a call to this draw selections. The draw selections here gets the selection object from the window. Uh, it checks to see if there is a range count. Um, I tried to use the type property, selection.type, but that doesn't seem to work in IE, um, but it does work in the other major browsers. Uh, so instead, I'm just checking to see if there's any range. If there's not, I skip this. Otherwise, I get the range, and here's where you can see I'm reporting all the things. Now, here's where we start to actually do the drawing. First, I get the bounding client rectangle, and this is the one that we're going to draw in red. This gets the rectangle that surrounds all of the selected text, including all of the different elements contained within the selection. So here we only have to draw one rectangle. I'm checking to make sure that the rectangle actually has dimensions before I draw it because uh, it's easy to get a selection that has a zero width, which I think would be kind of like a carrot selection, but I don't want to draw a carrot selection. Um, I then get the client recs, and this is going to report a collection of DOM rect instances each of which represents an element contained within the overall selection. This is that dashed blue. So for these, I'm just looping over the, the number of recs there, and I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm checking to make sure it has a dimension, and then I'm adding it uh, to the page, and I'm using the CSS top left width and height to set the dimensions of the box. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it was kind of a fun little experiment here, and uh, again, works in all the major browsers going back to IE9, I think, um, even, though the, uh, even though these two rectangle methods are considered experimental, they're, they're a working draft, I think, in the web standards, so I don't know, they're probably pretty safe to use. Um, but anyway, again, 
this is just an exploration, trying to get some creative juices flowing. I can think of some, some fun follow-ups to this, trying to track down and, and wrangle my creativity.